the city of Ipswich is nearly 100 kilometres away from yesterday's extraordinary flash flood, but it's still feeling the effects of the deluge. Residents are queuing up for sandbags. Uh, we have a sunken laundry, outside laundry, and that's sort of going under. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, backwater coming up from the river. Last night, authorities were saying the advancing water would only flood a handful of properties. But this unfolding disaster is becoming increasingly difficult to predict. It's 74 since our last flood and, you know, I never thought I'd ever see that again, but I was wrong. The water inundating this regional city is making its way into the Brisbane River, a sleeping giant with a history of enormous floods. That history was supposedly brought to an end with the construction of the Wyvernhoe Dam in the late 1970s, a massive engineering feat designed to effectively flood-proof Brisbane. But the dam is facing its biggest test yet. I say to all residents in the Brisbane, Ipswich and Lockyer Valleys, for those of you who can, please listen to radio reports. Uh, we will be updating people throughout the day. It is a constantly changing situation. Yesterday, the dam was 40% over its optimal supply capacity. Today, the figure is closer to 70%. That means authorities have to increase releases into the Brisbane River, even if that creates flooding downstream. I stress that the releases being made from Wyvernhoe Dam are not optional. There is no discretion here. This is how this dam operates. We need to make sure uh, that we protect people down this river system by operating the dam safely and appropriately. There are 6,500 properties that will be flooded. Those are a mix of commercial and residential premises. Brisbane is in a floodplain. And all the water in the river and in the creeks and in the rain has to go somewhere. On top of flooded homes, another 16,500 properties will feel the effects of flooding. In terms of affected people, I think the significant figure is in the affected flooded properties that I mentioned first, the 6,500, uh, there are about 14,900 uh, people we believe we're projecting will be affected. So the situation is very serious. This is a rapidly changing situation, so much so that since that press conference, it's now estimated 9,000 homes could be flooded. No one was predicting this even yesterday. And the warnings are very serious for those Brisbane residents bracing for flooding. And those are the people of primary concern at the current time. Those people should take immediate action to save precious personal effects, family records, family artefacts, items of furniture and I'd ask people to assist uh, friends and family who are affected in those areas. For businesses, uh, similar way. Low-lying parts of Brisbane are preparing for the deluge. Sandbags may not be able to hold back the full force of nature, but with a bit of planning, residents are hoping to minimise the damage. Well, you can only do so much, but you've got to try and keep something dry, haven't you? Keep the water out. In relation to the Brisbane and Ipswich area and the Wyvernhoe catchment, I'm afraid we have some very bad news this afternoon. Ipswich and Brisbane are now facing their greatest threat and their toughest test in more than 35 years. Further north at Caboolture, the gateway to the Sunshine Coast, authorities are advising people in low-lying areas to evacuate. Justin Davis and his son Trace had no choice but to leave as the Caboolture River takes over their neighbourhood. There's, there's a, a lot of water going in the house. How fast has it come up? It's come in real quick. We, we, oh, there's a little bit across the road. Uh, we left for 15 minutes. By the time we come back, it was, it was up. There's at the house. Where are you going to go now? Uh, Higher ground somewhere. Yeah, we don't know. We don't. I haven't been here long, so I don't know where higher ground is, but I'll try and find it. <laughs> For weeks now, residents of the southeast have been witnessing such scenes in other communities around the state. Now it's their homes, and there's little they can do to save their belongings. We can't. We haven't the time. We've just got to cut our losses and go. It's neither here nor there, love. We're safe. A lot of people aren't. Leaving for Catherine Weston and her husband isn't easy. But inside, strangers who didn't want their names made public were helping to salvage what they could. You don't even know these people. Yeah, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you don't know. Someone needs a hand you, man. If you've got the time and you can, you can.